Welcome back to the JW Sports Talk Show. In today's episode, we are going to be talking about which tackle should the Colts sign. You know, it seems to be down to two, to two tackles right now. It seems to be Eric Fisher or Carlos Leonard Jr. And depending on Eric Fisher's, you know, th- the visit with the Colts and all that, you know, we, we we don't know if Eric Fisher is going to be signed with the Colts. We don't know if he's going to be worth it. You know, it's not even guaranteed that he's going to play this year. But if he does, you know, he's probably not going to play for quite some time until into the regular season. Um, so then if you go over to Carlos Leno Jr., you know, he is a little younger. You know, he's not the best. I've heard some bad things over there from Chicago, but he was okay. He did get the job done. Um, you know, I think he could come in and maybe make – make a play or two and be a decent left tackle um you know for a year or two um you know which is what we really need you know and whoever it is you know you know say we bring in eric fisher and he can't play the first few weeks you know that's why we brought in julian davenport and sam tevy and that's why we drafted will fries and we still have will holden that's for that competition in case crap hit the fan and as it did in the draft we didn't really drafted a guy you know kirsten darisol was there at 21 but you know, if Ball- if he, if he was worth it at 21, if he was if he would have made a bigger impact than Quiddy, then you know he Ballard would have drafted him, and Ballard would have liked him over Quiddy Pay. So you know, I'm you know I'm I'm happy Ballard stuck to his guns. You know, even though left tackle is still a huge need, still didn't address it in the draft. You know, but Will Fries can't possibly start there. He could compete with you know Sam Tevy, Davenport, Holden. You know, the, all these guys are going to compete for that tackle spot. I know it, it, it also depends on who you're going to bring in. Even if you bring in a Carlos Leno Jr., you're still going to have them compete, and whoever wins is going to start. Um, you know, but if you bring in Carlos Leno Jr., you're really going to depend on, on him starting. You know, um, so I think that's what Ballard signed a few tackles for and, and drafted a guy that can even play all over the O-line in case, you know, uh, we have a few injuries, you know, because Will Fries can play anywhere on, on the line. He's very versatile. He could play tackle, guard, center, right guard, left guard, left tackle, right tackle. You play it all. Um, he, he and he could play center. If I didn't say that already, but yeah, if I if I had to pick one between Eric Fisher and Carlos Leonard Jr., I'm gonna take Eric Fisher, and and I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna take Eric Fisher because yeah, I get the injury is scary. I get that, you know, I get he's not going to be there to start the season, but you got to take that risk. You know, Eric Fisher, healthy, is a Pro Bowl tackle. And, you know, you can't be scared to take a gamble on that. I get Carlos Leno Jr. is a safer option. But to make the Super Bowl, but to make a deep playoff run, can't play it safe. Can't be scared to go out and get, and get better. And, you know, Eric Fisher would be more healthy down the stretch, which would make the Colts team a much better more lethal and better team you know eric fisher also has that connection with frank Wright or with chris ballard over in kansas city so i can definitely see that i definitely see why there's interest in there i definitely see why there's interest with carlos leonard jr as well you know he doesn't have an injury right now but he was released and you know the bears are replacing him with tevin jenkins you know um that just showed you how much the bears you know believed in him and I don't really, you know, they, they 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 didn't even care to keep him around for some competition. Um, you know, I think they had to release him to get to some kind of cap relief, though, by the end of some time or whatever it was, by the end of some date. Um, but you know, I'm I'm all in for Eric Fisher because you know, if you have someone stepping up there, so I was talking about those those four guys competing for that left tackle spot. You know, you you, you could also help those guys out. You know, you could help those guys out with the with you know chipping with the tight end you know chipping with the running backs and 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 then if you're running well it's going to take the edge off the defense a little bit which can also help you know the you know the tackles protect against the pass rushers so you know i'd be all in for eric fisher i'd really like to see eric fisher come in you know he is a former pro bowl pro bowler he come in and be and be an amazing tackle for the colts you know bearing you know him getting healthy and and getting back to what he was you know which is not going to be easy you know because the injuries coming off of is that Achilles tear, so you really got to watch. But you know, you know it's and it's hard to come back. But you know, Eric Fisher is so big, he and he can move. Excited to see what what he would bring to the table, and and I'd be down to to take the chance on him. You know, why not sign both? Why not sign both? Sign them both to cheap deals. You know, I get we have the backups, 
but you gotta go all in. You can't be scared to get better. You can't stress out enough. You can't be afraid to get better in an era where all the other teams around you are getting better. The Jacksonville Jaguars are a threat right now. No one's talking about the Jacksonville Jaguars, but they're a threat, you know. And then you have the Tennessee Titans, who is a very solid team, who is a threat as well, you know. And then the Colts' schedule and all is a very, very scary one. You know, you're, you're going to play the AFC South twice a year. You know, bearing the Texans, you know, it's not that, you know, it's going to be very difficult. You know, I don't think the Texans are going to be able to beat us. I really don't. Um, you know, I think we're going to sweep them again. Um, even though we did get a little lucky last season, but we did make plays to get those wins. But at the same time, you know, I think there are going to be two wins this, this season, especially if Watson doesn't play, um, which is seemingly very unlikely right now. But then, but then you know, we have to go through that. We have to go through the NFC West. We have to go through the Rams. We have to go through the Cardinals, the Seahawks, the 49ers. None of those teams are a joke, you know. And, and then you have, you know, we have to, we have to play Tampa Bay the last game. Um, you know, we have to play the Ravens, and you know, we're going through the AFC East, which is another extremely tough division. The Dolphins, the Bills, the Patriots. Um, you know, and, and and then you have the more improved Jets, which I think we should be able to beat. But, you know, it's any, it's any given Sunday, and you have to come out and play as hard as you could. Um, you know, you can't mark any game as, a, as an automatic win. So, you know, you can't add. So my point is you can't be scared to get better in a year that we are set to make a deep playoff run or to make a nice playoff run. But we have a tough schedule ahead of us, a tough task ahead of, ahead of us that we need to, you know, prepare for this schedule. You know, I get, yeah, you know, you, you want to get healthy later on more so as well because you know you you need to be good for that playoff stretch for that last stretch you know that's when it's most important that's when you're gonna make or miss the playoffs so that's my take on that who would you guys want at, at left tackle would you guys rather carlos Lennon jr or, or eric fisher appreciate you guys for tuning in you know if you did enjoy make sure to leave a like and subscribe and as always